I think in Armenia we have an existential crisis in education currently. Because education is void of meaning, it's lost its value. When children get to a level of maturity, their interest in schooling uh, drops uh, rapidly. And this loss of meaning uh, reduces, uh, leads to a reduced I desire to, to learn, to study. The one of the problems of children is that there's a declining desire to study. Studying for many is not really important business. So in this situation, what really matters is to understand what education is so that uh, we can manage, uh, govern efficiently. Mark said everyone explains the world, but it's about changing the world. It's trendier now to quote Zizek famous philosopher who says everyone changes the world but the problem is about understanding and explaining it there's so much change now so rapid change that on the so much on the surface that we fail to grasp why something gets done whether we had sufficient knowledge to implement such change or not now turning to the reforms of Armenia I'll very briefly try to present a few conceptual errors, mistakes that we've made. Number one, in the general education reform process, we applied the model that is known as Nouveau or New Public Management. Nouveau public management, new public management emerged in the 80s in Great Britain uh, and is linked with the name of Margaret Thatcher, a number of countries, UK, Sweden, USA. And also using the relationship between Thatcher and Pinochet, Chile got engaged in this movement. The, the idea behind this movement was an effort to commercialize schooling, to enable schooling to be managed by private models, business models, with some underlying neoliberal approaches. And as Armenia uh, was quite inexperienced in Soviet years, we did not have experience of managing. Education was managed from Moscow. We were just the implementers. Unless there was money in new <laughs> public management, In public education, we engaged in some decentralization. <laughs> and it was a role vested for local governments, schools and regional governments that uh, are key components of this model. School governance, school management, is, school governance is done via boards now, school boards. And the state, the ministry is unable to govern properly. Let's create participatory boards who are well aware of the community and will be able to manage the school effectively. And a whole number of similar transformations were made, judging from the fact that it's been already 20 years that we have introduced these transformations. One may say that none of this works any longer. Ըստ աշակերտի ֆինանսավորման համակարգը, որը բերում է նրան, որ դու կարող ես ունենալ 2000 աշակերտ ունեցող դպրոց եւ 80 աշակերտ ունեցող դպրոց, որտեղ մրցակցությունը, բիզնես մոդելը, այս դպրոցը սիրուն է, լավն է, բոլորս գնում ենք այնտեղ, ես մեկը վերանորոգված չի չեմ կինում։ Եվ այս բոլոր կետերը, որ ես նշեցի, խորհուրդներ, ֆինանսավորում, մարզպետարաններ, հենց այսօր նույն նախկին կառավարության կողմից արդեն գնահատվել են որպես ոչ բավարար եւ փորձե արվում սա փոխ է երկրորդ խնդիրը որ մենք ունենք այսօր այն է որ այս տարիների ընթացքում մենք փորձել ենք բարեփոխումներ ներկրել 
Բարի փոխումների ներկրումը իհարկ է շատ խնդրահարույց մոտեցում է, որտև ապացուցված է, որ այլ երկրների փորձը, երբ որ դու փորձում ես կոմոտ տեղայնացնել, չի աշխատում, բայց ծավոք սրտի մենք փորձել ենք բարե փոխումները սպես ասենք ներկրել, և այդ ներկրման արդյունքում մենք այսօր Հայաստանի հանակրթական համակարգում ունենք երկու զուգահեր գործող ոպերացյոն համակարգեր։ Ես ընդամենը երկու որինակ բերեմ, որինակները շատ են, մենք այսօր Հայաստանում ունենք կրթության կողարկված ուսումնական ծրագրում։ Մենք անում ենք այլ բան, այսինքն դպրոցները այս տարիների ընթացքում ինչոր իմ աստով են ուսակցական են ուսակցական շահագործման և սոցիալական կարճաժանկետ խնդիրները համարվում Ասեմ, որ կրթության կողարգված ծրագրում այս մոդելը նույնպես ներդրվեց։ 2008 թվականից հետո նախորդ իշխանությունը գործում էր, այսպես ասենք, բազմադեմ։ Այսինքն, այդ իշխանության մեջ կային շատ կրթություն � դրսից է կող պատվիրակությունների է տաշխատելու համար, կար տոլի գարխիկ խումբը, թաղային հեղինակություններ, որոնք ոգտագործվում էին, այսպես ասենք, բիզնեսի կամ ընտրությունների հարցը կոշտ ձևով լուծելու պապուկ կեղծման մեխանիզները։ Այսինքն այդ նպատակով իրականացվեց կողարկված ծրագիրը, որ բոլոր տպրոսների տնորենները գրեթե դարձան հանրապետական և նաև ուսուցիշներ են ներգրավեցին։ Այսինքն կողարկված ծրագիր, որպես ոգտագործվեց այն հանգամանքը, որ ծնողները ունեն որոշակի կախվածություն տնորեններից և ուսուցիշներից, և այս գործոնը փորձարվեց ոգտագործել, որպես էդ պապուկ կաղաքական Այն է, որ որինակի համար մենք ունենք մի կրթական համակարգ, որը գործում է հին որենքներով, բայց որինակի համար մենք ներկրել ենք, ասենք ներառական կրթության մոտեցումը։ Եվ հիմա տպրոցներում ես հին ու նոր մոդելները � Հաջորդ խնդիրը, որ մենք իրականացրել ենք մեր բարեպոխումների ժամանակ, դա այն է, որ կրթական համակարգը դիտել ենք որպես մեխանիստական միատ համակարգ, որտեղ մեր կարծիքով գործ։ The idea was that uh, this should result in a decline in the number of sectants in Armenia and the exponential increase in the reputation of the Armenian Apostolic Church. Fifteen years have gone by, and in both cases, we've rolled back rather than progressed. The same about high schools. When the reform of high school was introduced, the main premise was that once we introduced this model, the students will no longer have to take external mentors to do their homework with them. But this practice she still continues. Therefore, the model, the approach that education is something mechanical uh, has been disproven. Within the same uh, framework of mechanic approach, we committed another error. 
which is the reforms of education should be done in the following sequence. You write up a strategy or a development program, and then the strategy and the development program are approved. Send it over to the schools. People read this document. They generate ideas. And as a result, the educational system changes reforms. That's a completely erroneous approach. In reality, though, there were many strategies written by the ministry, which I found as furniture supports to even out the surface or things in the schools. There is this story which demonstrates that whenever a system operates on mechanistic premises, you never get any results. When the Brits were in India and in one of the provinces there were too many snakes, they decided to offer a premium for every snake killed. Five years later, when they assessed the project, apparently there were more snakes in that province than before. Why? Because the Indians decided to breed snakes. And the same logic uh, very often applies also in the Armenian education system. We do something through mechanistic regulation, expecting a particular outcome, but get a uh, contrary effect. Another issue flagged by the previous speakers is this reductionist methodology in education. What is reductionist? Only that shall remain in the curricula which is measurable, which lends itself to measurement. So you gradually phase out the knowledge and skills that cannot be impartially measured. As a result, you teach them a lot of stuff only because it lends itself to verification. And you lose a lot of other stuff, which are important, but since they're not verifiable, they're left out of the education system. This results in the formation emergence of certain hierarchies in the education system. Th there is a group of primary subjects, mathematics, Armenian language, Armenian history, where you have exams. And there is another group of subjects that are deemed to be secondary and are pushed out of the curricula, like literature, arts, technology, social science. That which is far more important for the society than verifiable knowledge. This reductionist error is pretty ubiquitous throughout the world. Another issue is over these years we were sprinters in education. If we look closely at the educational documents, we'll see that the reforms were viewed as a sprinter's exercise. They brought together a task force, uh, assigned them three months to write up a development program, six years for a set of educational standards. We do not have a single educational curriculum in Armenia which would have been a result of a marathon. Not a single one that would have commenced 10 or 20 years ago, which today, as a result of persistent efforts, is going ahead. What's the problem with sprint? If it's a sprinter's approach, everything remains superficial. The teachers, the headmasters, everyone cannot absorb or understand it. They do not become carriers or owners of this. The ministry, of course, cannot get 37,000 teachers and manage them. The only solution would be for these people to own up, own this change, and carry it forth. But if you do sprint all the time, here's the funding, here's what we do, we run out of money, some other source opened up, here's what we do now, something else. This sprinter's approach has really wrecked a lot of damage 
on the educational system. It's a static system. So we sit down, develop certain activities, then implement them. Whereas education is a system which is called in the literature complex system with a complex response. This is a system where the relations are very sophisticated and we're not dealing here with raw inputs. The teachers, the students, the parents and the headmasters are responding. If you want to change something, they respond. And rarely in Armenia this response is public. They respond, but surreptitiously, because the existing culture prevents to people to respond out loud. So those who go ahead with the reforms have this wrong impression. They think that if there is no signal coming from the system, then everything's normal. But education is a responding system. In countries like ours, it has been invisible. But it was there. The fact that teachers, headmasters were involved in some corrupt activities, this is also a silent, camouflaged response. Let me conclude with a story which may characterize our education system very well. We have also an issue with persistency. We had this approach which is called spray and pray. We've just sown the reforms and prayed for them to work. There was no consistent pushing ahead. And the last story to complete the cycle. Once there was this guy who goes to a tailor, wants a suit made for him. And when he goes to pick up the suit, he says, but my sleeves seem to be too long. He says, well, hold your arms high then, is the advice he gets. But then my trousers fall off. Well, you have to walk uh, crouched a little. Is it okay? Okay, go ahead. So this person goes out into the street with hands held high and crouching. Two guys see him and say, look at this poor guy. But what a genius his tailor was. For He tailored such a perfect suit on such a disgraceful body. This is the situation with our education system. In order to get these reforms imported from God knows where, in order for them to look nice, we're trying to distort the body. This is the result of mechanistic approach to education. Thank you.